real game plan. I'll just fill you guys in on my last two weeks. And it's quite eventful couple weeks. Um, this weekend, I just hosted the Western Canadian Foosball Championships at 12 Kings Pub. That's where I host my weekly foosball tournaments. The last few years before this, I had hosted the tournament at Microsoft. This was a nice change because majority of my tables are already at 12 Kings, which made the move a lot better. Also, this year I own a truck that makes moving the tables that aren't at 12 Kings a lot easier. The tournament took up pretty much all of my evenings and weekends leading up to the tournament itself with cleaning tables, moving tables, organizing setting up things like the stream, buying a webcam, um, just a hectic, hectic two weeks. I'm really glad that it's over and I get to sleep in this weekend. Today is Thursday. I can't wait for the long weekend. Other than that, the tournament went well. There was a lot more positives than there were negatives. Some of the negatives were that it happened to fall on the hottest week that I've ever experienced in Vancouver. Maybe the hottest week ever in Vancouver. I think the car temperature said 37 at one point. And unfortunately in the back room there's no AC. And we had 71 people show up. So that room back there was quite ridiculously hot. I honestly thought that we were going to kill some of the seniors that played. I'm looking at you, Jerry. He's sweaty when it's winter time. I don't know how, how he lived. Actually, he didn't even play senior singles, so that probably has something to do with it. He had to back out. I think it's just it's too hot in there. Shout out to everyone that helped out. There's endless amount of people that made this possible. Bong for bringing in the AC, which you'd be surprised that it was there considering how hot it still was. But the second he took it away, you really noticed that it was gone. Ivan and Sarah for not only loaning their light and score markers, but for walking my dog when I was too busy on the weekend. Jessica, you walked Georgia as well. She loves you guys because I was not available. And I really want to say thank you to everyone that traveled to come. We had people from all over, and it was actually it was the best tournament that I've ever run personally, and I, I hope that everyone there enjoyed it. There were seven spots on the Canadian national team given away. Will Stranks and Simon Edwards out of Edmonton won the double spot. Daniel Coulter, who is originally from Mississippi, but now is married to a Canadian living in Edmonton as well. He won, he actually won doubles and singles, but since he played with his wife Carly, they don't qualify for the men's team. So that got passed down to the highest placing Canadian team, which was Will and Simon in third place. But yeah, no, it, Daniel did really well. He qualified for the single spot. In senior, we had Simon Edwards winning two, so he was open doubles and senior singles. From Vancouver, we had Robert Gingell and Jerry Meister in senior doubles. And finally, Jamie Toe in women's singles. I don't think anyone is overly shocked with these results, but there were some notable upsets throughout the throughout the weekend. Brad Dion and Luca Ross, they Luca Moro Ross, they played outstanding. They are actually ranked expert, but they place fourth in open, beating a lot of open teams. Dylan and I realized that hosting a tournament and winning a tournament are not synonymous. When your warm-up matches are very intense open games and you aren't even touching a table prior to that, it's very difficult to win. We played okay, but we've definitely played better in the past. Um, I think we learned a lesson that we need to delegate because that's a lot of work for two people. Personally, I had some big victories within the tournament, even if I only did place fifth. I beat Will Strengths for the first time. Will is the person that I owe at least 50% of my game to. He taught me how to play in Edmonton. He was the first person to introduce me to professional foosball, and I was kind of under his wing for quite a few years while living in Edmonton. So to beat him in singles was... It was a nice, nice feeling. No disrespect to Will, he's an amazing player. If anything, I hope this comes across as a compliment because he is definitely one of the one of the best players 
especially in terms of mentality. He really grinds. He really tries. Like he doesn't waste any balls. He's not he doesn't waste any balls. There's so many foosball jokes. It's ridiculous. You play with little men. You play with rods. You play with balls. It's just recipe for just dirty jokes. I can't even talk about it without laughing. It was nice to see all the faces of everyone coming. It was nice to just talk about strategy. You hear some people that get pretty intense with it. They start studying psychology. They start figuring out like the primal brain. A lot of players will actually fast. The I guess when you're fasting, your senses are heightened. You're you're a little quicker to react visually, um, physically. I guess if you're in the woods and you're hungry, you need to you need to hunt something down, and your body is kind of in its desperation mode. So a lot of players will fast during tournaments. Some players will actually chew gum. I guess this is also another primal route. If you are in the wild and there's danger around, you're not going to take the time to sit and eat. So the action of eating almost implies that you're in a place that's safe and comfortable. So if you're nervous, this can not just be foosball. This could be job interviews or anything. If you chew gum during or right up until the interview or the match, it'll trick your brain that you're eating and calm you down a little bit. It definitely will not remove all of the anxiety and stress involved with it, but every little bit helps in tournaments like this. Yeah, and I started talking about just random things that I found to be pretty cool. Um, recently, I realized that humans react faster to sound than they do to sight which is weird because the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound. So we're programmed to hear things faster than we are to see things, which explains a lot in foosball when it's a quiet tournament room versus in a loud bar with karaoke when you can't actually hear the ball on the surface. They did a test with mice and replicated it in rats where every time they smelt something in particular. I believe they used lavender for the experiment. The mouse would smell the lavender and simultaneously get a little electric shock to the point where the mouse now associated the smell with pain. And its offspring were taken into a different environment and they were given the scent of lavender as well. And there was no shock associated with that it was almost encoded in their DNA and they were afraid and they ran away when they smelled lavender for no reason, which is crazy to think. So if you're afraid of things, maybe you can blame your parents or your ancestors. I know that babies are inherently afraid of snakes and spiders immediately. That must come from a lot of humans getting killed by those out in the wild. Look at you, Australia. You guys are fucked. Everything kills you there. There's another cool scent one. There's a few, actually. I'm sure everyone knows the study of attractiveness related to symmetry in the face. So they had women look and rate men on attractive or non-attractive based on portraits. And then they they followed the study up, and they had each one of those men wear a shirt. Those men wore a shirt. I forget what they did. It was some sort of physical activity. And after they had taken the shirts off, the women were now asked to smell the sweat on the shirts and rate which musk smelt better. And I guess the results were very similar. So the more attractive you are, the more attractive your sweat smells, which is kind of crazy. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have guessed that. And it actually goes into the next one where you can smell fear on people. And it's proven that if someone around you is nervous and fearful and you can smell, I guess it would be a pheromone maybe, if you can smell that, parts of your brain trigger in the fear response. Because, sorry, I just got a text here. I was thinking it was maybe Jordan, but not. Yeah, so you trigger the the fear response in everyone else around you so people can feel it when, when you're stressed something to think about. I don't really know how that relates to life at all, but I thought it was pretty cool. What else we got here? Got a few little notes of just things that I really enjoyed, experiments that I found to be pretty cool. Ryan told me one while we were out in Dubai. 
he said that there were mice that were given weights in their stomach and there was basically they had a bag in their stomach and some bags were heavy and some bags were lighter the mice with the heavier bags all lost weight so even though their stomach was still inflated the same amount they want to attribute this to I don't know if this is proven or if just a hypothesis but attribute it to sensors in the feet so if you are carrying a lot of weight and your feet feel it your body will naturally want to shed that weight to make it more mobile, more agile, just more healthy. And this could actually lead into attributing a sedentary lifestyle to weight gain. Even if you are eating healthy and exercising a little bit, if you are sitting at a desk all day and are rarely on your feet, your body is not going to feel, or your sensors in your feet might not feel that weight and might cause you to gain weight. That was a cool one.